Okay, this topic is uh, related to GitHub, but it's not entirely uh, exclusive to GitHub. I want to talk about Markdown, the Markdown syntax. So whenever you create a repo, I've, uh, best practice is to create a readme.markdown file. So this .md, that's the markdown file, and this is what it renders as on the browser. Now, HTML. If you write web pages, you write HTML, hypertext markup language. So those are the angle bracket tags that you put around things to describe them. With Markdown, what we're getting here is this is the rendered version. And if we go into the raw, this is the syntax right here. So this hash mark means that this line is a title. And then this is just some plain text. So this is my description. This is my title. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, do it in brackets. Uh, I have a plugin in brackets called the Brackets Markdown Preview. So if you click on the little uh, extension manager here, click on that, uh, search through the available ones for Brackets Markdown Preview, uh, it just lets you see what you're building. So I opened up my README file, and this little thing right here, this is the symbol for Markdown, the little arrow with the M. And all it means is when I click this, I get to see the rendered version as well as what I'm typing here. It makes it very easy to make sure that you're doing things correctly and you haven't made any typos. All right, so let's talk about the syntax for Markdown. One hash mark, it's like an H1 tag. Two is the H2. And three and four and five and six, uh, just like H1 through H6, you can put these hash marks. Just make sure that you have the space following them. Uh, piece of text, this would be treated just like a paragraph. Now, I jump to the next line here, I hit enter, but it still appeared here. And that's because if you want to space out most things in Markdown, you need to put two carriage returns between them so that you create the, the line break here. That's what this extra carriage return is what moves it from being here to here. There we are. Okay, lists. Uh, so we've got headings, we've got paragraphs. If you want to make a list, we can use either a hyphen or a plus sign or an asterisk. Asterisks are used for other things as well, so I'd recommend the plus sign or the hyphen, either one followed by a space, and you'll see when I did the space, this turned into a bullet. There we are. And... If you put two spaces in front of the hyphen, or the plus, or the asterisk, followed by the space. This will indent, so you can see that you've got the different levels. And if you put numbers, then you get this version. And depending on which level you're at, you'll get either a, a number, a capital letter, or a lowercase letter. It'll keep changing. So you can have indented lists. You can do ordered lists or unordered lists, either one. Uh, next thing, links. If you want to put a link to something, there's two parts to it. So we have the text followed by some parentheses. Square brackets for the description and then parentheses. Inside the parentheses, this is where you put the actual URL. There we are. And all of this is going to be, I'm going to upload this readme to the um, repo that we've been working with, the learning GitHub repo, so you'll have access to this file and you can use it to refer back to uh, creating the different syntaxes. Um, code, if you want to put some inline code, The back tick character. That's usually the uh, top left hand corner underneath the tilde. So 
So you can see how it highlights it there like that. And that's just by putting a back tick character around whatever it is that you want to make inline. If you want a block of code, then what you do is you put three back tick characters and you say what it is that you want to make the code of. JavaScript, Python, HTML. Now there's lots of different ones. So I've got a JavaScript example, I've got an HTML example, just by doing this. And putting the word here just changes the highlighting that gets used. So in JavaScript, Python, whatever, there's different uh, keywords that'll be highlighted in different ways or styled in different ways. Uh, images, that's another one that we want. Um, so same sort of idea as links. going to use the uh, an example from Pixum. That's uh, photos.org. And then 200 by 200. There we are. So now I have a random image being generated from Pixum uh, being displayed on the page. So this is how you input images. Uh, let's see what we got. We've got lists, paragraph, code. Uh, oh, block quotes. If you want to have a block quote, So you get the little gray line and it's indented, styled slightly differently. So we've got block quotes that we can add. Now tables, um, tables aren't officially supported, but uh, GitHub and a number of other uh, uh, rendering sites will actually support this. So for a table, what you need to do is you put a pipe character, your heading, another pipe, Another heading, another one, then at least three of the hyphens, like that, and then there we are. So here is a table. Pipe characters go in between. You have to make sure that you've got at least one space in here on either side of these um, pipe characters. For the divider between these two lines, you have to make to split between the headings and the content. You have to make sure that you put at least three of these dashes. Now, if I had another row, I wouldn't have to add another set of separators. Um, I just put the space in between here, like this. And you also get the automatic uh, zebra striping, the white, gray, white, gray, white, gray background, like that. All right, last couple of things. Um, bold, italic, and strikeout, if you want to do that. So, so let's say I wanted to take the word Friday and bold that. So two asterisks make something bold. One asterisk makes something italic. There we are. So the word created is italic. The word Friday is bold. And let's say that we wanted, we had Saturday there, but we're going to remove Saturday, so we want to strike it out. So we do two tilde characters like that. There we go. So we've got italics, we've got bold, we've got strike through, we've got tables, we've got block quotes, we have images, code samples, inline code samples, links, lists, headings, and paragraphs. So everything that you would need to create any documentation that you needed as at a basic level for your readme file for your GitHub repos. So as I said before, I'm going to put this up on GitHub. 
So I'll come into here, into my learning git. Oh, I better uh, save my changes here. There we are, saved. Come over, there we go. All that content added. Updated my readme file. Very important to add these messages. There we are syncing, and now this should be up here. Refresh this, and there we are. There's my updated readme file. All the stuff that we wrote. And if you are looking at this and you want to find it, remember, just click on the readme file. Again, it's the rendered version. Go to the raw, click on that, and there's the actual syntax itself. All right, so I hope you find that useful. I hope you uh, start adding a lot more detail to your readme file for your repos. It uh, really does help other people when they come to the website and they're looking at your repo and they want to understand what it is that you've done and how it works and how they should use it. If you want them to use the code, how should they apply it to their project? If you have any questions, leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.